So for the past few days, the boiler in our house has been broken. Side note, cold showers are not fun. Hey guys, it's Isla and Slads in the back. It finally happened with people. And you already know what finally happened for the title, but just in case you can't read. It finally happened! On the 22nd of March, 2018, I went to see Hamilton the Musical in the West End. And it was glorious. Before I start this video, I do just want to say that I'm realising that my channel is becoming more and more musical theatre based. And I promise you that this is not going to continue. I just like musical theatre, okay? You can't stop me. But if you're not interested in musical theatre, please don't unsubscribe because I will be putting out other uni content and just random stuff, being a weirdo as I am. But for now, let me enjoy this moment, okay? Now, as you may be able to tell, I am a little bit obsessed with Hamilton. So because I think I'm an expert, I thought today I would give you my personal review of the West End performance. Now obviously I'm joking, I'm not an expert, I'm just a big fan of the show. But for any of you that are going to be watching the West End version after listening to the soundtrack, I just want to say like a few things that I found different, a few things that I didn't quite like in the production, but most importantly, what I thought was absolutely amazing. So yes. Let's begin. The first thing I have to say, which is the most outstanding thing for me, because I wasn't expecting it, was the choreography. Obviously going in, like, I'd already listened to the soundtrack about a million, million times. But when you're sitting there in the theatre, I just realised how amazing the choreography and the dancing was. The movements were so, like, disjointed and, like, jarring, and they're doing, like, these amazing lifts in the air. Every move that they do, it's like telling the story, like it's going along with the words. And when everyone's doing exactly the same thing, like they feel like simple moves, but all together, it just, it's mesmerizing. It, it was literally, wow. Another thing I love with the symbolism of the bullet member of the ensemble. Now I'd read an article about this before, so I guess I was kind of looking out for it when I was watching the show. There was one member of the ensemble who represented the bullet that kills people, basically. Her positioning amongst the crowd was always like impacting like when death was near Hamilton. I'll link the article below. And when I was looking out for it, I was like, wow, this is really clever. Like, she's standing near him now because death is, is, is present. And the whole scene where Burr shoots Hamilton and then time like stops is just, wow, honestly. The choreography, the choreography, the vocals and harmonies. <sighs> now obviously I knew about this already because I had listened to the soundtrack about a million times but I just have to reiterate the sound is so beautiful like it's so <sighs> and again like when you're in the actual theatre hearing it it sounds so much better and to think that they have to recreate that every single night of the week is just amazing it's amazing and I'm moving on to specific characters I'll be honest at first I was a little unsure about the characters of Burr and Eliza I think this is because I went into the show with all the voices of the Broadway original cast in my head so it was very strange like hearing different voices and like different intonations of the words but this new Burr he kind of like spoke all the words a lot more like as a normal person would say them. And at first I wasn't sure because like he would pause in different places and it was quite different, like noticeably different. But then towards that too, I, I started liking it a lot more. I thought it worked a lot more. The only song where I didn't think it worked was for Wait For It, which I was a little sad about. He didn't go for it as much as I would have liked. Rochelle, I think her name is, who plays Eliza. Um, mm, I wasn't sold until Burn. That's when I was like, okay, yes. This is, this is the emotional one. I don't know what it was about her, but I preferred Philippa. But she did nail burn. That's the one thing I did notice. She did nail it. Oh, and the scream. The scream after Philip's death was, wow, oh my. I cried, like, instantly. I was just like, tears, there, right there. Another character that stood out for me a lot more and, like, more likeable and, like, a bigger part than I had noticed in the soundtrack was John Lawrence. I don't know, I just fell in love instantly, probably with the actor and just, like, his persona on stage was just great. And obviously in the soundtrack you can hear he's always there being like, yeah, boys, yeah. But for some reason when I saw it on stage, he was always like standing at the front doing it. In the soundtrack it kind of sounds like it's a background noise, but they made it like a prominent thing on the stage. And it just made you love him even more. He's just so cute and 
cool. <laughs> I also love the subtle way they showed the romance between Lawrence and Hamilton. It was in a subtle way that if you didn't know about the whole history element of it, you wouldn't have noticed, but because I knew about all these rumours, like, they just kept giving each other like these small little glances, or they'd always be like, the two standing next to each other out of the four of them. I just thought it was quite clever, like not putting it too direct as it does in the soundtrack, but it was still there. Another thing which is probably quite controversial, but I prefer Jamal to Lynn playing Hamilton. Don't get me wrong, I love, 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 love Lynn Manuel Miranda, because, you know, he's talented. He wrote the freaking whole musical. But as an actor, I think Jamal got the emotions of Hamilton across a lot more. You could see, like, weirdly well that he started off the play as a 19 year old and then he ends as an old man. Like, he didn't, he didn't change what he looked like at all, but it just came across that he was so much older towards the end. And just, in general, I sympathise with him a lot more and I just thought his voice was better. Sorry. <laughs> Washington. Just a small moment of appreciation. His voice melts like butter. Wow. Wow! The King was fabulous. I loved it. I think the thing I loved about it most was that it was nothing like the way Jonathan Groff did it. And don't get me wrong, I love Jonathan Groff. Trust me, he's like... We, we love Jonathan Groff, we'll, we'll talk about that later. It's just that the new king like brought out different aspects of the script, like he did different actions as well, and that made it more funny because I wasn't expecting it. Being the king of England to an English audience, as opposed to being the king of England to an American audience, it, you know, it has to be a lot different. You're working with a different audience, and I think obviously this is an English actor as well, playing an English king instead of an American actor, so, he gets it a lot more, the jokes are in different places, but it was still brilliant. Bravo. One more thing that I was a little disappointed in, which I was really sad about, was Mariah Reynolds. Probably the song that I was most disappointed in the whole show was Sing Into This. And if you know me, I love this song to bits. It's, I just, I just play this one all the time. I don't know, she wasn't as big as I would have liked her to be. Like, it was fine, it was all good, until it got to her high note, and it just was not belted as loud and as like passionately as I wanted it and I was expecting. And I was just really sad about that. <laughs> Rachel Jones as Angelica. Wow, wow, wow. She is fabulous. I love her to bits. I cannot fault her. Every time she came on stage, I was like, yes, please, give me more. Another thing I noticed was the jokes land a lot better on stage than they do in the soundtrack. Don't get me wrong, I found things funny when I was listening to the soundtrack, but I found a lot more things that I didn't notice before funny when watching them on stage. Obviously that comes with all the movements and stuff, but like some lines, they, they just said them, but for some reason I found them funny when I watched them, even when they weren't like doing significant, really funny things. They were just funnier, they were just funnier. But to end on a really good note, um, I just want to point out, like it feels like such a small thing, but the bows. So usually when you go and see a musical, they have like ensemble come out first, and then you know they have all the parts coming out in like order of how big they are and important they are to the show. Which you know works most of the time, like I'm not faulting that at all, but for some reason with this show, when they all came out in one line, they just did one bow. I don't know why, but it just made me so happy. Nothing wrong with doing the order of parts bow, but something about a nice simple ensemble bow is just very nice and it just feels very inclusive and just, I don't know, in the context of the show it worked so well. So I was really happy about this and I know I went on way too long about that for how small and insignificant it is but to me it's important, okay? Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you did enjoy it. And if you're going to watch Hamilton on the West End or Broadway if you're that lucky, uh, hit me up, let me know what you thought you agree with some of these things. If you're interested in more musical theatre stuff, please do subscribe because I, as you can tell, I do like it a lot. I'll be performing in Legally Blonde in the summer and I'm probably going to make a video on that because I love Legally Blonde, the music is amazing. I mentioned it before but it's fab. But also if you're not interested in musical theatre, subscribe anyway because I make funny content and uni stuff and yeah. 
We like, we like lots of different things on this channel. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Good. Bye-bye.